press record <laughs> I did press record <laughs> oh gosh I've had a day I've had a day I've had a day <laughs> I I hope your day has gone infinitely smoother than mine so um the theme of the month which we're get pretty close to my birthday which means we're almost to the end of the month um new beginnings. So we're 23 days into the new year. And some people, I got a voicemail from somebody the other yesterday, who's in Kauai, and she's just lit up and she's so happy and life is going so great and lovely. And then there's my experience of life, which is crazy and wild. <laughs> I don't know like where in the spectrum you are, but um, so uh, today's practice is titled Clarity. The elephant god Ganesha, who is informing our new beginning practice, um, a lot of the practices we have taken are about the twists and the turns and that's what the elephant trunk does and to honor how um you know we can have really great intentions and then boom you find something in your pathway that you have to go huh what do i do with that and the sanskrit word is exigency exigency it means doing something with that which has been presented to you an, it's like receiving a, a birthday gift where you're like, oh, thanks, you know, and then you go home and figure out who you're going to pass it along to, or, <laughs> or you're like, oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Like, you know, anywhere on that spectrum. And then there's little obstacles in the path and sometimes they get removed and you're like, yay, life is great. And then a new one comes in, take your block compress your glute medius. You don't know where that is. It's the outer upper buttocks. Ah, tell it to relax. Keep your belly active in towards your core. Mm. Beautiful. Okay. Come on up. And let's take a downward dog. It'll feel really good and very different. I had a friend who's been in Bali for a month at a Nishtanga Vinyasa teacher training. A 200 hour teacher training in 30 days. And uh, they shared with me that while a lot of parts of their body have gotten stronger, they've completely lost their hockey butt. Their buttocks have disappeared. And I thought, how sad. <laughs> Inhale to your knees. Exhale, child's pose. <sighs> hmm. Okay. Come on forward and have a seat on your right hip. Keep your knees bent out to your side. You can support your body, but line up your shoulder with your elbow so that you're held in the outer rotation of your arm and the interconnection of index finger and thumb. Reach down and hold your left ankle and press that knee, use your, your strong core and press that knee gently forward. 
And then in your mind, squeeze the base of your, your bottom glute. And maybe it will happen in real time. And keep your core strong, the hip flexor hollow and the buttocks engaged as you extend that leg back behind you. Now think about pressing your femur bone towards your heel. Lengthen your tailbone and keep your belly active. We want a gentle quad stretch and hopefully it's the entirety of the belly of your quadricep muscle. Yeah. Okay, come on up all fours. Take your blocks, step the left foot forward. All right, so the reason we did that is I'm going to dispel a common misalignment in the yoga practice when it relates to a very common pose. <laughs> so when we take a quad stretch, like um, if you were to take a lunge and you wanted to find a quad stretch, do you feel it through the entirety of the belly of the muscle or is it mostly right up in where your hip and your leg connect, right where your hip flexor is, where the strongest hip flexor crosses the hip joint. That's not where you want to feel it. So if you let that femur bone push forward and you think you're getting a good stretch, but it's way up high, that means tighter hips tomorrow and maybe back and hip problems later. So press the knee forward, hollow out the pocket, Use your core and keep trying to push your, your buttocks towards your heel, even as you expand. Now you're going to stretch through the bones in both directions, not just forward. So try to push through your back heel if you had a block back there. And you can go deep, but you want the stretch sensation to be down low in your quad. Some of you are not going to get a quad stretch here. I get that. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing, we're going to work on the same leg, but I'm going to have you bring your, uh, I don't know, the leg that was in front, bring it down on the floor. Is it your left leg? Make it a 90 degree like you were in a lunge, your left leg. And then notice that you've probably, the space between your thigh bone and your hip bone, those are two different bones, your femur bone and the pointy part of your hip bone has gotten quite narrow. So you can let the, the belly fall forward or you can pull the belly back and feel like you're pressing your buttocks towards your heel. And the space between your femur bone and your hip bone got smaller. If that doesn't make sense, do it again. Let the belly roll forward and then roll the belly back and see about lengthening your buttocks flesh towards your heel. Yeah. Come on up to lunge. Simple poses, extremely complicated by complex. So the back leg, we keep the femur bone moving back. The front leg, if you let your belly collapse onto your thigh bone and you can't even get your fingers between there. Tighter hip tomorrow or back pain or hip pain later. So push the hips back, lift your belly, extend. So push your front foot down. Now think about this, your sit bone needs to extend towards the back of your knee while that other leg does its job and moves towards the heel. Now you should feel a nice quad stretch and you're not compressing and collapsing into your hip socket little less rewarding because we can't get as deep 
and give the appearance of elaborate fancy yogi. Mm -hmm. One down, other hip, hold your ankle, hollow out the knee. So press the knee towards your belly and your heel towards your glute. Keep pressing the knee forward even as you push the sit bone towards your heel. Now think about that bottom leg and pull the belly button back, your waistline back, and root your outer buttocks towards the bottom heel. Deep breaths. Now we'll do the other side. So whatever leg you needed to have forward to do side two. Lunge. <coughs> we'll go into the um, normalized, uh, your vision of like, let's remove all the obstacles in the path and just melt into the pose. <laughs> and you're gonna feel this part of your hip gets stretched, but it's actually probably more ver verging on discomfort. This part of your hip is going to get compressed. So back it off, rein it in, and scoop it under. Then you can, it's like you're pushing through your hands and you're gonna push through both legs. And you can go deeper, but you've gotta keep reaching that back thigh towards your heel, your front buttocks towards your knee, your belly towards your back. And you can get as deep as you want, but no collapse. And yeah, and lift up, hamstring. It's like a clinic class, huh? How to find clarity in your hips. I guess this is uh, one of the ways I deal with challenging days. I go <laughs> deep into my, uh, here's what makes me happy. <laughs> my science. And it's done. Even when the leg, front leg is straight, if you let your front belly collapse and you go unconscious around it, you're stressing out the hamstring. So try to keep, remember, find your snake, wrap it up against your belly, push the upper thigh bones back, and then see if you can lengthen up through the heart space. Mm. And release to a downward dog. Now in a few days, we're gonna have a practice that takes all of this and moves it into much faster pace, much deeper poses, and you're going to have the skills you need to keep your body safe, steady, to remain clear and free of injury and to really expand into the path that you've created. And inhale to your knees, lay on your backs. A little gentle twists, your pace, your breath. Namaste. Thank you.